about to make some rice wine. You want to get sweet rice. And if it don't say sweet rice, it can be short grain, sticky rice. But you don't want long grain and you don't want brown rice for this. We're going to use sweet rice. And you want to get five cups of rice. You want to rinse it off through a sieve in the sink. And once it's rinsed, you want to add it to your rice cooker or your pan. You want to add eight cups of water. Five cups of rice, eight cups of water. If your rice, cu rice cooker is too small, you can split it up, split it in half. If you don't have a rice cooker, you go to buy one. Get one of these. They're really cheap, really good. I've had this thing for over five years. I use it all the time. It works great. All right, once your rice is done cooking, you want to get it all out like a baking sheet or something. And spread it out. Spread it around. You gotta let it cool down. You might want to put it in your oven, but don't turn your oven on. Keep it covered, you know. Let it get cooled down. That's what we want right there. We're gonna make one gallon of rice wine. It's good right there. Let it cool down, we'll show you the next step. All right, you wanna get some Chinese yeast balls. Some people call them Shanghai yeast balls. They're, uh, they're kinda hard to find in stores. Uh, if you got an Asian store, you might be able to find one in there, a pack of them. I'm gonna use two of them. You could get away with using one, I'm gonna use two. Um, I guess they call this a coo or a Q or a chew, however the hell they pronounce it. Um, you want to beat the hell out of them. Put them in a baggie. I ordered these ones from eBay. So pulverize them into a powder. Used to beating on balls, huh? Beating on the balls. That's what I do, man. I'm a pro fucking professional. That's how I made my money back in college. <laughs> I beat the balls right. All right. You want to get your hands wet after you wash them really good. And pour this all over the rice. You want to rub it in. Squeeze it in there, work it into that rice. Get your hand a little wet, it makes it to where it don't stick to you so much. Work that rice over real good. Sounds like mac and cheese. Cheese. You know it's up when it's making that sound. <laughs> Sweet love. You got a spray bottle, some water in it. You could moisten it that way too, help cool it down. You know, you will let it cool down to where it's not steaming. Keep moistening your hand. It's really sticky. All right, we got a one gallon pickle jar here. We're gonna fill it up. Get some water on my hands. Get 
still a little warm, but it's uh, it's all right. It's not too hot to hurt that yeast. Love you a long time. You give her some rice wine, she'll love you a long time. Five dollar, five dollar. <laughs> five dollar. Two buku. <laughs> she ain't never said that. <laughs> she ain't never told me it's two buku. <clears throat> All right, now. I'm gonna wash, I'm gonna wash. You want to add your your lid with your airlock. Wait about two weeks. This thing will be bubbling like crazy. About four days. There's a lot of head space there. Eventually, what's going to happen is it's going to draw all that liquid away from that rice and turn it into wine. We'll show you. We'll come back to you in a couple weeks. All right, we're ready to uh, transfer our rice wine. This this shit will go on forever. It'll go a little longer in two weeks, and it gets real strong too. First step, we're gonna run it through this little strainer. That did not work. <laughs> Alright, so we're just gonna run through cheese a big we're thing. Run through cheese cloth. <laughs> we'll squeeze it out. You might get some shit growing on top of it, that's normal. It's not gonna hurt you. this thing out. Yeah, you should do it in little bits at a time. I think it squeezes shit out of it. You know, breaking through that. Here, go in here in case you break through the bag. And then just be as strong as you want with it. And then we'll pour whatever. There we go. Yeah. Way in case it explodes. It's just skeeting on me. Skeet! See them every year. I'm kidding. At Don't the, fucking report me. <laughs> at the apple festivals, they're yeah. always selling them. Yeah, people take home, make their own cider with. When I was a little kid, Russell had a press. He'd tell me about it. He used to take, uh, make his own hash with it. It's like a little box with a yep. screw, screw it tighter and tighter. I think 
who said he put honey on that shit? I don't know. It's been a fucking long time. I see that honey make it burn slow. But the hash will burn up real quick. That's good enough for me, man. like that cloudy shit. People like, I, I don't. The other one came out really clean after it set. There you go. We're going to let that sit a little longer. Cold crash it. Then we'll, we'll bottle it. Alright. We're going to move our rice wine. While that shit settled on the bottom. That's all we get. That milky milky cocoa puff, huh? Milky milky cocoa puff. That's what it looks like. Now to clear up, almost look like water. If you keep on clearing it up, refrigerate it. But to me, that's good. I might clear it up some more, but I'm gonna call this video a wrap. We're going to try it the way it is right now. Boy, that's good. Well, that's better than the last stuff I made. That tastes almost like that sake we bought from the store, man. You're going to like that. Yeah. Yep. See, that other one I added sugar. This one I just did traditionally. It tastes amazing, dude. I like that. Way better than that other sake I made. Yeah. Just additional. Don't add no water. Don't add no sugar. Yeah. Just make traditional sake. <clears throat> it does taste like that one we bought. It tastes great. Plus, this is still milky. A lot of that flavor comes from that milky. Yeah. That's probably why that unfiltered one was totally different than what we're used to. With the yeah, filter. I'm going to keep it like that. And I'm just going to stir it up. 